fam, it's Murray. Welcome to another video here on the Gamers World channel. And this one is going to be awesome for all you iOS and Apple iPad gamers out there. So Apple just hosted its annual Worldwide Developer Conference, which they call WWDC. And there was amazing news for gamers included, which was a bit of a surprise as Apple never usually has much good news for serious gamers. But this one, Apple announced it is ditching its lame controller restrictions, which plagues iOS gamers currently. So there's a major update coming to tvOS, iOS and iPadOS, which is the new versions of the operating system for each one of the devices. So tvOS for Apple TV, iOS for iPhone and iPadOS for the iPad. So these things are going to drop this fall and they will add full support for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers which is going to be a game changer for gaming on iOS. If you game on an iPhone, iPad or Apple TV this is super exciting news for you especially if you're playing fast paced games like Fortnite and stuff like that where touch controls are not usually the best way to play. Believe it or not, Apple devices, minus their Mac computers and MacBook laptops, make for pretty good gaming machines. The powerful chips in their iPads and iPhones allow for really high-end graphics, high-end titles, with you know, really good performance to be honest. And the selection of games available on iOS is growing every single day with many exclusives landing on iOS before their Android counterpart. The only problem is that Apple's restrictions often hold these games back from reaching their full potential, but one of these biggest restrictions will disappear entirely, that being lack of controller support. A lot of games work just fine with the touch controls, even though I'm not a fan, especially of fast paced games using touch controls, but Others really need physical buttons and sticks. Apple devices have actually supported game controllers for a long time for this very reason, but only Apple approved MFI controllers are compatible for now, such as the Steel Series range of MFI controllers. MFI controllers must follow Apple's controller guidelines, which outline how many buttons each controller can have, so on and so forth, where they should be placed. Some buttons, like analog stick buttons, just aren't a thing yet, or they weren't allowed on early examples, such as the Steel Series Stratus controller, which you can pick up for yourself in the link in the description if you wish, as I imagine the price for these MFI controllers will drop very, very quickly now that PlayStation and Xbox controllers will be able to be used on iOS and tvOS and iPadOS very, very soon. So not only do you have to go out and buy an MFI controller, which, well, they're not the cheapest to be honest with you. Some of the Steel Series ones are dearer than you'd pay for your PS4 DualShock controller or your Xbox One controller, but in most cases, the controller won't have all the buttons and functions you're used to, just like on the PS4 DualShock or the Xbox One controllers, which we're talking about. So why is this a big deal? Well, let's talk about Fortnite, a game we all love to play. For example here, the analog stick buttons allow you to sprint and crouch on your console set up by default. They're really super important movement so you can duck behind cover and you can run away if you're under attack but if you play on ios you need to get used to using touch controls which can be a bit of a nightmare or using different buttons for these actions as the analog stick buttons aren't available on all the mfi controllers which can be super annoying if you're used to a controller setup on console say for example say you play on your ps4 most of the time and then you want to play some fortnite on your ios device you're maybe on holiday or out on the go somewhere and it's a completely different controller setup you need to use because the MFI controllers do not have the same button layouts as your PlayStation controller. But rejoice, this nightmare is almost over my friends and this is all going to change very, very, very soon. 
So when Apple rolls out iOS 13, tvOS 13 and iPadOS, the devices will support the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers for the first time ever without having to jailbreak your devices, which is awesome so you'll be able to connect your controllers super easy via Bluetooth, just like you would if you're connecting them to your PC or your Mac computer. You'll then be able to use the controller you're used to using and the key thing here is you probably already own a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller and then it will have the exact same buttons you're used to playing when you play on the big screen and that will make it so much easier for you to pick up and play and not have to worry about a completely different controller configuration. This also should help make the way for custom controller support such as scuff controllers. I know a lot of you guys like picking up these controllers that have the paddles on the back as you can do a lot of cool stuff really quickly. And if you're wondering what a scuff controller is all about, you can check out my unboxing video with the card which will pop up in the top right hand corner of the screen. So custom controllers like the scuff controller which are based on old school genuine PS4 and Xbox One controllers should also be compatible as they'll have the same chips and internals which means you're going to be able to use your cool paddles and stuff like that in your iOS gaming sessions which should give you a huge advantage over touchscreen players on the battlefield in Fortnite for example. Another thing though that they didn't mention, we've mentioned um, PlayStation and Xbox here, there was no mention of Nintendo Switch Pro controller support, so I would assume right now that that's not supported, which could also mean that some of the cheaper third party PlayStation and Xbox One controllers that you can buy may not also be supported for your iOS 13 TV, OS 13 or iPad OS devices when this goes live. However, this is just a massive, massive change here from Apple. I'm really surprised about this. I don't know if this maybe has something to do with Google Stadia and that is why they are upping the ante and they've also got their new arcade service dropping soon. So this is all really, really good news and it will make the experience much, much better for all iOS gamers and it will make it much more worthwhile for developers as well to add in controller support since most people will be using controllers now probably with Apple devices if they have one at hand. Next thing you're going to ask is, Murray, when are these things going to be available? Well, iOS 13, tvOS 13 and iPadOS will be available to everyone for free this fall if you have a compatible device. And Apple has said that it will be releasing the developer betas as of their keynote, WWDC, which was yesterday. And then public betas will arrive in July this year, so we should not have too long to go. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this news. I think this is awesome. I cannot wait to try out my DualShock 4 and my Xbox One controller on my iPhone XR and my iPad, as it will make just a huge difference. I think it's so difficult playing games like Fortnite using the touch controls. I know a lot of you guys out there use the touch controls and a lot of you that leave comments on these videos use the touch controls and are really really good with them but I suck with them so the controller would be my input method of choice so let me know again what you guys think about this and let me know what you guys think about just playing these kind of games on iOS in general do you do that do you like doing it do you prefer to play on PlayStation, Xbox or even the Switch. I must admit some of these Apple devices are super powerful so you probably get better frame rates and performance in Fortnite on a new iPhone 10 or a new iPad Pro than you would on the Nintendo Switch as the iPads are so so powerful these days. Your Apple, I think it's the, the A chips isn't it? A10, A12, I don't even know what chip we're at now but they are super super powerful and make for a really good gaming experience. So as ever guys, if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. It really, really help out the channel. If you're a Fortnite player or a PC player and you're in the Epic Games Store, please use my support the creator code Murray in the Fortnite item shop. Tweet me a picture and you will get a shout out in my next video. Also, remember to leave me a comment down below as I love chatting to all you guys and make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell as as soon as this, iOS 13, TV OS 13 and iPad OS update goes live. I will be putting a step by step walkthrough video up just to show you guys how to connect your PlayStation and your Xbox pad 
to your Apple device and then we can jump in and play Fortnite, show you the difference, show you how good it hopefully will be. So you guys can get that set up super easy and play with a controller going forward. That's it from me, my name's Murray. Hopefully you enjoyed this little bit of different video today, but remember we'll be bringing you all the latest and greatest news from E3 next week. Also, super awesome time to be a gamer. What is life? We've got so much going on. We've got Xbox potentially going to be showing us more of their new Xbox console at E3. There's leaks every other day with Sony with the new PS5. We've got Google Stadia announcements happening this weekend as well. There's chat about a Nintendo Switch Mini. There's so much stuff going on. Life is good, my friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. We'll see you tomorrow for another one.